let's get into navigation. We are going to perform a basic VOR DME approach. VOR DME is something entirely new to me. In fact, navigation is something entirely new for me. That's why we're just going to start off doing a simple VOR DME approach. Nothing like VOR arcs and stuff. As this is something new to me, I hope to be able to explain all this in a simple and clear way. By the way, I am showing you how to do this on an airliner, as I find the navigation instruments of a glass cockpit to be easier to read than those of, for example, a Cessna 172. But I understand if you disagree on that. So, first of all, what on earth does VOR and DME mean? Actually, they are two completely different things. But the combination of the two makes for a great navigation tool. A VOR is a radio station of which the aircraft can use the radio waves to determine the heading it has to fly to, to fly straight to that station. A DME is a different kind of station that can tell an aircraft how far it is away from that specific station. As you can imagine, by combining these two navigation tools, a pilot can easily fly towards such a station, which can be located near an airport for example. This Boeing 777 is descending above the Caribbean seas, ready to start an approach towards Princess Juliana International Airport. But there's a problem. The pilot only knows that his plane is somewhere northwest of TNCM, and luckily he was able to find TNCM on his flight gear map, because that's what pilots do. By enabling the nav aids and the data checkboxes on that map, he is lucky enough to find a VOR DME station right next to TNCM's runway. So he opens his navigation screen and enters the station's frequency. There's only one frequency, because in this case the VOR and the DME transmitters share the same frequency. At that moment a white line appears on the pilot's map, crossing the VOR DME station. Unfortunately, the line is not lining up with the runway, which would make approaching the runway easier. The pilot knows that he is going to be landing on runway 10, and on the map he finds the correct heading for that runway which is 95, so a value close to 95 will give him a good approach to the runway. He can now close his map and navigation settings and fly only relying on his instruments. And because I'm tired of talking in third person about this pilot, we will take over his plane from here on. As we know that our plane is northwest of the airport, it's easy to figure out that we need to fly south to meet up with the white line. So, after setting a heading of 180 on the autopilot, we can set up the instruments in the cockpit to help us out reading the VOR DME data. We need to tell the navigation display that we want to use a VOR, which we can do by simply turning this knob. And that's basically it. A thin line with the same heading as the white line on the map will show up with a thicker but shorter block in the middle of it. To approach the line that will guide us to TNCM, we will have to turn to a heading that will make us intercept that line, just as you would do to intercept an ILS glide slope. Because the direction of our line is 96, a value of 126 will be good. Adding or subtracting 30 degrees to or from the set direction usually works fine. Now the bigger block in the middle starts making more sense. It shows us on which side of the white line we are. Because it is currently to the right of the thin line, we would have to continue our 126 heading to fly towards the line. If the block would be on the left side of the thin line, we would have to fly to a heading of for example 66 to get closer to the thin line. Now eventually, the block should start to line up with the thin line. As that's happening, start turning your plane slowly to the heading of the thin line, in this case 96. If you've done this correctly, the block will be exactly in the middle, right when your plane reaches heading 96. That means you are now flying straight towards the VOR DME. But there is a catch to this. Although the heading of your plane and the heading of the thin line are now the same, the wind can blow your plane to the side, kicking it off that perfect alignment you've just created, 
To fix this, all you have to do is wait and correct. Wait to see if the wind indeed makes the block move off center. And if it does, make small corrections to the plane's heading to compensate with that. And now you may be wondering, what about the whole DME part of this thing? Yes, you're right, we haven't talked about any distance measuring at all yet. It's pretty simple though. If you look right here, you'll see a number. That's the amount of miles you're away from the VOR DME station. As you can see, we're getting closer and closer at the moment, which is exactly what we want. Now that you know the distance to the VOR DME, you can start preparing for approach. So prepare your altitude and speed so that you can immediately start approach as soon as you have the runway on visual. And that's a basic VOR DME approach. I hope I've explained this simple enough and luckily I now find this navigation stuff rather interesting. So stay tuned for more navigation tutorials coming to this channel as well as other flight gear related videos.